Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskey. And today I have something from Murray McDavid. It is a 19 year old single grain. 18 years of its life was spent in a refill ex bourbon um, cask, and then it received a special treatment a one year finishing in a Koval bourbon 110 liter cask. This stuff. <laughs> Robert Brunecker and Chicago Koval Distillery. Um, very, very interesting. I find it just exciting that these smaller independent distilleries in America are now sending their used casks to Scotland, to Ireland for the somewhat larger or smaller independent bottling companies to use for finishing products. So this is actually a bottling of the cast of 600,000, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So six casks blended, married together here, and they actually had the finish for one entire year in a um, 110 liter bourbon fa cask from Koval. Now, um, there was last year, that would have been summer 2017, we now have summer 2018, that's the addition here, actually another um, single cask, 18-year-old. And um, I talked with at the um, Limburg Whiskey Fair in April of 2018, um, the global ambassador, Dean Jode, and he actually held up the old 18 with the new 19 and you could really see how much more color was absorbed by that finishing in that ex um, bourbon cask from Koval. 70 euros about maybe 85 dollars in the states maybe 90 depends on the um, exchange rate and um, single grain means column still means probably up to about 94 percent um, distillation and then it is um, cut down to maybe about 65 percent put into barrels and left there to rest now i like grain whiskies very sweet very mellow but they have to be old enough so you need to leave them in that cask for decades so i have a um, 50 year old grain mm -hmm. I have a 45 year old grain even better and um, those things are very very nice if done correctly if not done correctly they're just burning and they're just hot and they're just a lot of pepper in there so my nose says and this is the amazing thing I do get that um, cotton candy I do get that typical grain vanilla but what I do get also is the bourbon that cask must have been fairly wet, to be honest. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour a little bit of the Koval bourbon. And I'm going to nose it. I'm going to nose the um, McMurray. Um, McMurray. Murray McDavid. McMurray, that's a good one. Wow. Very, very similar. I actually find it amazing how much influence that cask had on this single grain whiskey. Very interesting idea. Well done, lads there by Murray McDavid. Mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. mm. <laughs> it's almost like a hybrid. You get the nice grain. But then you get that nice, and this is what really, really um, is unique, that Koval bourbon note. Now, I think it was um, Glenn Morangi um, in the fall of 2017 brought out something called Spios. It was a single malt Scott whiskey finished in, or actually I think it was, I don't even know if it was finished, it was actually matured in rye barrels. Some people liked it, some people didn't, and most people kind of went, wow, there's just too much rye influence. I don't want rye. And um, this is the same thing here. Um, if you like the bourbon from Koval, you're really going to like this. But if you're going after that typical, standard, very excellent nose texture and feel of a good grain whiskey, you're not really going to get it here. It doesn't really deliver what it... Um, promises, but instead it delivers something else which I totally like. So in my opinion, this is going to be a solid B. I really like it. 
Value for money, 70 euros for a grain whiskey is always expensive, even if it is 19 years old. So I'm going to give it a C minus. I do think that you can get other things for 70 euros that taste much, much better than a 19 year old um, single grain whiskey that was finished for one year in Koval bourbon casks. But it's interesting and it's nice and beautiful bottle design. If you watch the video afterwards, you'll just see their display um, stand there at the Limburg Whiskey Fair and the color and the, the, the different categories. Oh, excellent. They have the blends and the single malts and the grains and they have something else in there as well. And there's like four or five different colors. And you, if you know the color scheme, immediately you know what you're going to get. And it's a very, very nice process. All right. My question of the day is... Have you had anything from Murray McDavid? And if so, what is your favorite bottling so far from them? Now, they've been around for a couple decades at least. And I must say, this is one of the, this is actually, I think, the first uh, Murray McDavid I've ever had. And I must commend them in their innovation as well as their creativity. Well done, gentlemen. But what do you say is then the best Murray McDavid bottling you've ever had? All right, like my videos, please. Ha ha ha. Please subscribe. Yay. And also, maybe you can tell others. Wednesdays and Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays are my publishing days every time. Three videos a week about rare and exotic whiskeys. If someone else has done a video, I won't, but I haven't found a video about this at all out there. So, ta da. It's my turn. All right, thank you very much. Love to hear from you. Bye bye. Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the view of an American in Germany together with Dean Jode from Murray McDavid. Wow, look at all these beautiful bottles behind us. All right, tell me a little bit how you're an independent bottler, I guess. Correct. And yeah. how did that happen? How long have you been in business and um, what is your speciality? Well, so uh, Murray McDavid's have been established since the mid 90s, 1995. Uh, we predominantly used to focus on bottling single malts, right. um, focusing on additional cask maturation. Yeah. So focusing on, uh, well, predominantly back in the day, uh, maturing single malts in wine casks, okay. uh, especially from Bordeaux. Yeah. Mark Rainier, one of our founders, had a lot of connections mm -hmm. uh, in, in Bordeaux. So using casks from lots of different famous uh, vineyards, yeah. oh. Port Chateau Aquem, Taubo, okay. lots of famous uh, vineyards. Not just wine though, uh, rum, yeah. port, Madeira, all first filled casks. Okay. Oh, nice. To add layers of flavor yeah. onto well established malts. All right, excellent, excellent. Could you maybe pick out one or two bottles you especially like? Absolutely, Go absolutely. <laughs> so, one of my favorites is actually a new addition. Mm -hmm. I mentioned that we focused on single malts, right. but as of 2015, we expanded the mm -hmm. line okay. to cater for the whole family yeah. of Scotch whiskey. So, grains, yeah. oh. blended malts, mm -hmm. and blended Scotch. Good. So, one of my favorites is one of the new additions to the team. Now, I'm a bit of an Isla fan. Ah, uh, I'm not. You're not? No, I'm sorry. I'm. Well, well, I'm, apparently, I'm still a beginner with 700 videos about whiskey, but who knows? <laughs> <laughs> well, I also have something for you then. Ah. Uh, but my personal favorite is a 27-year-old blended malt. Mm -hmm. Just two single malts going into the blend here. Now, Are you allowed to say which ones? We do. Oh, we do. We actually special, mention special. them. We actually mention them on yeah. all of our labels. On all of our blends, we mention the malts and grains going in. Exactly. So a lot of transparency. Excellent. I love that. A lot of transparency, but. On the label, unfortunately, we can't mention the ratios okay, of Well, the that's men. the Scotch Widdis Whiskey Society, not you. Indeed, absolutely. <laughs> David Glazier um, and Compass Box, yay. Yeah, well, that's it. I mean, <laughs> but me personally, I can, of course, tell you the ratio. Ah, so, if, I, if I ask personally, of course, that information is allowed to be given. The label not, you're right. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> so within this blend, as I mentioned, two single malts, 90% of the malt, Mm -hmm. It's from Beaumont. Okay. Distilled in 1989. Yeah. Wow. 10% of the malt, Lafroig. Oh, gets a little bit more of that. That's it. Yeah, thing. just a little bit of ashiness. <laughs> just yeah, a bit yeah. of ashiness to, to bring out um, the peat there. But what I really love is that old school Beaumont. Yeah. The floral, the yeah. fruity, little waft of ashy peat coming right. through. Roy from Aquavite would agree with you, by the way. I don't know if you know him on YouTube or not, but he's a good friend of mine. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Well, big shout out. Exactly. Come and try uh, the uh, the Mortz of Isla. 
But secondly, what else do we have here? Well, I mean, you mentioned you weren't a fan of um, uh, of the the, the smoky PD type of things. Yeah, but I mean, we're treated to some crazy warm weather in Limburg this weekend. Yeah. And what what I personally uh, really enjoy in the in the warmer months. Yeah. Let me guess, it's going to be a grain. You are correct, sir. <laughs> so this is a 19-year-old grain from Loch Lomond. Yeah. 18 years this has been in a refill bourbon cask. Okay. The last year of its life has been in the first full bourbon barrel from Koval Distillery in oh. Chicago. Hey, I actually had a live stream together with Robert Bicken, Bicken Eka just a couple of weeks ago on Easter Sunday. Wow. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, we really love collaborating with the guys at Koval. Yeah. A, because of their, the quality of yeah. what they're doing. But... We love the size of their casks. <laughs> yeah. 110 liters in size. Exactly. 30 quicker. gallons. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. A quicker pickup of maturation. Yeah. And oh, no. you yeah. can see here, the, I have an 18 year Loch Lomans. This yeah. is the 19 year. Oh. One additional year in the Koval. Yeah. Recall. And was it the bourbon or millet? It was the bourbon. Okay. Excellent. This, in this yeah. case, the bourbon. We have a 28 uh, year old North British there. Yep. Yeah which has spent an additional year in one of their rye casks. Oh, okay. Very, very, very interesting. Sure. This is the bourbon, so yeah. we're picking up a lot of the creamy yep. sweetness, lots of vanilla. All right. But you can see, I don't right. know if you can pick up on the right. camera. Yep. You should be able to see that, yeah. Yep. If not, maybe we can do this, which I have to do all the time. <laughs> yeah, very good. So 18 years in refill bourbon, 18 years in refill bourbon, but an additional year in the Coville cask. Oh. Very good. Now, what can we expect in the future? What are some of the highlights that are coming out? Maybe that you can give us a little bit of a prediction about. Ooh, Ooh. Okay. he's happy. <laughs> but what can he say? Yeah, okay. well, um, we're actually working on our next release. Yep. Um, so in two months time, there'll be 25 new Murray McDavid whiskeys um, out on the market. Okay. And um, Next week, we have a very special bottling coming out okay. for the Spirit of Space Aid Festival. Hi, We're doing yeah. an exclusive. Yep. Um, it's a nine year old single cask Alter Vein. Okay. Matured for six years in refill bourbon, mm -hmm. the last three years in first fill Pedro Jimenez Sherry. Uh, bottling at cask strength, yep. big sweet nuttiness coming through, a bit of spice. Good. It's a Sounds good. great. It's Wonderful. So, Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany here at the Limburg Whiskey Fair 2018 together with... Dean Jade from Murray McDavid. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.